Hey everyone, Randy from Extreme Sandbox. Today we're going to do our Wheel Loader 201 training. So this is our next level. We already did a Wheel Loader 101, so very basic operations. If you haven't seen that, watch that video. But today I'm gonna to go over a little bit more on basically how to dig, how to scoop, and then also how to use attachments, different pieces to the Wheel Loader. So let's check that out. This is our second uh, wheel loader training. So if you haven't seen uh, the first one, please watch that one. It'll go over the more basic controls on it, but I'm gonna go a little bit more advanced. We're using our Komatsu WA270 wheel loader. A lot of the wheel loaders are very similar in operation. So, and if you know how to use one, you can generally use all of them. Important note here in the beginning, we have already done our pre-op inspection for the day. So uh, you definitely wanna check your machine out. We're also in a pretty controlled environment here, so we know uh, our site pretty well. We, we dig in the same area, we train out here, so we've already done site inspection, everything like that. With that going again with the machine, again with our Komatsu machine, there's a couple different configurations that you guys, again, depending on all of you have been in other machines, I think the move is going more to one joystick for the right hand. You will see uh, some of the older Komatsu, I've seen cat machines where they have two levers, one's for the boom, one's for the bucket. Uh, I think some people have a certain preference. I think joysticks the more common way and a lot easier. Uh, very similar to how an excavator would work with the boom in the bucket. And then you might also see, uh, I've been in larger loaders that actually they're removing the steering wheel and they're actually coming down with a joystick on the left side and you do all your steering with your left. Uh, that's just to keep some of the strain from your shoulders from turning this. But again, generally you won't see those. The larger uh, wheel loaders are the ones that would have that. With this one, I have a lockout lever over here. Sometimes they actually have a lever like a, an excavator to pull up to activate your joystick. But this one's just got a red switch on our Komatsu. And I got my parking brake on the front uh, that I'll take off. Red P on the display there. Now, uh, go ahead, I'll pick that up. So I'm gonna go straight into it. Uh, now today, two different ways. The initial video, if you watched it, we use, there's two different ways to shift in our machine, in the Komatsu machines. And again, pretty similar to others. Either you have a, on the left side of the steering column, you have one, or more commonly for an operator is gonna use just your right joystick, there's a switch on here. Now with the Komatsu machines, there's a switch over on the right to activate which one you're gonna use. So uh, we always teach with just the left hand. Uh, for newbies, because it's nice to say left is all you're driving, right is all your boom and bucket. But uh, because this is a little bit more advanced, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my right hand there. Left will stay on the steering there. So with that, so put it in forward gear. I still have the shifter with the speed selection on there. Sometimes you'll see it over on the control there. Now, again, a couple of things. I'm just gonna go over uh, scooping and a couple of return to dig uh, features like that. Now, when you come out to the pile, you know, we're gonna come down, try and stay. You know, sometimes it might touch the ground, but you really wanna be low to it without um, really getting right into the pile yet. You're always looking at your blade. Generally, the top of the bucket is a good indicator. There's a line right there. Ours are actually painted red, so it's easier for new operators, but you'll get to know that. Uh, again, what the biggest thing is practicing, taking big, giant scoops. So I drive into it. Once you're in there, you don't just want to curl the bucket. You actually want to be pulling back on the boom while you're driving into it. A couple reasons you do that. Um, first, you're trying to drive that thing up. That transfers a lot of your weight down onto that front uh, tire. So it gives you a little bit more traction into it. Um, so that's one reason it's important. Uh, so keep pulling that back and as I'm driving in. Now the key here, and we took some flack for one of our initial videos just with spinning the tires. As an expert, no, it is frowned upon to be if you see tires spinning. You can do damage to your tires. Obviously you can mess up the sight a little bit. So you definitely don't want to do that. So I'm going in. And as I'm going in, I'm pulling back and curling the bucket at the same time. Ideally, that's the kind of load you wanna see a fully loaded bucket there. And then I'm going into reverse. You can always watch in where you're going. And then bringing it down. Biggest thing for a new operator is low and tight to the ground. The Really the biggest area to get in trouble in a wheel loader is when you're up high. It's when you're turning, things like that. Bring that around. And then slowly you can start raising up if it's a dump truck or whatever. Now you always wanna be high enough. Now you'll notice right there and I can feel the machine. I am not only high, I'm a little bit of an angle. That is your riskiest point on a wheel loader. So that's why it's really important if I see that, if I'm doing that, you can see all the whole machine. 
this is where you're gonna get in trouble on a wheel loader. So take your time. Ideally, you wanna be lined up straight on there. I'm off a little bit of a side here. Now, as you dump, realize that that whole bucket comes down. I see new operators as well. When they start opening the bucket, you're gonna come down another four feet with that bucket. So a couple ways you can do that. One, as I'm going right hand right to dump, I'm actually, I can also be pulling back at the same time. You're raising the boom and, and opening at the same time. So that's a good strategy to avoid banging into a dump truck or something else like that. You gotta practice that. Now, what we didn't cover in the first video, that is probably if you're loading dump trucks or doing a repetitive, uh, most machines have a, they call it return to dig. Uh, so really with the Komatsu and every loader I've seen is if I just take this right joystick and just go all the way over left, you'll see my bucket just goes back and it goes to what that level was um, for digging. So that way I don't have to try and position it. Now I'm putting it back in reverse, watching where I'm backing up. Again, Komatsu's got a backup camera, which I think is pretty standard nowadays in newer machines. And then all I'm doing is bringing it down. Now you'll notice that return to dig feature, I, all I did was went right hand forward and it kept me at that level. I'm already set. This is all about efficiency for a new operator, you know, getting right back into that. So I go back in, bringing that down. And then as I'm in, slowly pulling back while I'm going in. Again, caution, trying not to spin your tires, trying to get as full load, and you also don't want to get it too high. Once I'm in there, I don't need to raise any higher. I'm just gonna put it in reverse. As I'm backing up away from it, that's when I'm bringing it down. Now, this one I'm just gonna bring straight forward here. So again, going straight up, you'll notice most excavator or most wheel loaders will actually be curling the bucket away. You'll notice it's doing that automatically. Again, that's most newer machines. Uh, if you don't have that, if you're an old machine, you will have to uncurl that bucket while you're going up, otherwise you're gonna spill it over the back. Again, driving up, this is where I see the most operators get in trouble. Your tires, you don't necessarily want to be driving up, but if I have a dump truck there, I'm going high enough to get above it. And then as I'm dumping here, I'm most likely pulling back on that right hand at the same time. That's going to be dumping. And the key there too is making sure your bucket is, depending on what material you have, sometimes banging that bucket a little bit will get anything out of that uh, it, that's stuck in there. So you don't look like you're not a new operator driving around. And then I just go return to dig again. Okay. And back in reverse. Okay. Now we're going to go over, we're going to do some attachments. Now we have a, a dirt bucket, probably most common. Sometimes you will get these uh, machines that they're fixed on there. They're not, uh, we have a quick attach on there which is pretty common. Uh, obviously, skid steers have pretty much all, that's all they have, but wheel loaders have that as well. You see it on their machines, excavators as well. Now for the Komatsu, there's pins in there that uh, you need to disengage. You'll see, and there's a switch, you may not see it the best over there, but usually it's on the corner with a little safety tab on it. Uh, and what you're doing, first of all, you gotta disconnect your bucket, so you're gonna curl it all the way in. So I'm keeping it all the way like that. And now I'm gonna, there's a little safety tab on here. Komatsu starts beeping. Let me know that I'm disengaging it. And then all I'm doing is holding that joystick all the way to the left. I'm actually looking, I can see the pins coming out there. Once I see that, then I'm just setting it down. Now I'm trying to uncurl it a little bit. Again, it's hooked at the top. Kind of rolling it away, setting it down. And then I can let go. So now for the camera, if you see better, you can see you know, all attachments really just sit. They hook on the very top there. Um, and I can see behind where the pins, right now they are retracted out because I let go of that switch. But if I hold this back and if I close it, I can actually see the pins retract. And I'm sorry, they're out already there. But if I let go of it now, you'll see and I push the, a lot of times I'm giving it, I'm in neutral and I'm giving it gas at the same time, giving it a little bit of power to get those hydraulics um, to move those cylinders. Sometimes you get things stuck in there, but I can see right now they're fully out. So I'm gonna go ahead and retract these because I'm gonna get ready to hook some forks. All the way to the left. Okay. Now curl it back. The back up here. Now the key here is you do not want to have, well, first of all, you don't want to go in with your bottom kick plate of that sticking out. You're trying to just hook the top two. 
there's two hooks on these attachments. So I wouldn't necessarily say you want to be all the way out, but you want to have enough room where it's tilted out a little bit. And then you're just slowly going in. I'm watching both sides, trying to line it up. Once I'm on there, then I'm just pulling up into it, okay? Putting it in neutral, that way I'll be able to give it some gas without moving forward there. I'm gonna go ahead and just, my pins are actually out right now, so I'm gonna retract them. And what's gonna happen while I'm going left here, it's gonna drop in. So I actually felt those pins go out. A lot of times I would go into it with the pins already um, retracted, so that one, I, they were out already. But you saw it drop, and then, again, giving it a little bit more throttle there, just to make sure, and then it should be secured. Now the best way to check that at the end is usually pushing down and rolling that away, whether it's the bucket or the forks. If it wasn't all the way secured, it's gonna kick off, and you obviously wanna figure that out before. And there we go. Got my forks attached. Now forks are, again, there's several attachments. Real quick with the forks, and fairly easy. I'm gonna drive out here. We got junk cars here, but you'd use forks for a lot of different things. Anything here, it's just understanding your center of gravity. Um, you know, when I talked about the bucket being raised up, you were looking at that tilting with the machine. We well, get an added dynamic when you're just using forks on a wheel loader is the weight distribution on what you're picking up. So using as an example, I have a minivan out here in front. I know the weight's gonna be fairly in the front because of the engine block. Uh, and also looking where my forks are. But I get in there, pull back, pick it up a little bit, and then I have that hooked. Key here, low and tight to the ground. As you can see, you don't ever wanna be raising this too high, but I've got that fairly well centered. You don't wanna to curl too much, otherwise you're actually pulling your forks up, tilting whatever you're carrying in. Generally, most likely what you're carrying, because you're picking up off flat surface, needs to stay flat. So. I'm going to put this forward and bring it back. Uncurl a little bit after it touches the ground. And then if you're on a pallet or whatever you are, you're just trying to slide your forks out. There we go. That's that. Now I'll set this back down. Always try and park with your attachment flat on the ground there. Put it, I got parking brake. Lockout for the joystick. Again, either a lock lever, either way. And we're good to go. Okay, so that was our Komatsu wheel loader, our second training, our 201 training. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, we just want to go a little bit more. Uh, I, I really think it's important to understand stick time, stick time, stick time. For a new operator, the best way is to get reps. So just taking more scoops, things like that. Hopefully I showed you some of the attachments and how you change those out. Not all machines have that. Uh, please put in the comments below uh, if there's other things you'd like us to cover. If you have other tips, we are not experts. I don't think we've ever claimed to be. Just trying to show you guys some of what we've learned. So appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our channel.